Hello, this is Ty with the Canix product team. And in this video, we'll be going over everything there is to know about the QuickBooks online integration in Canix. So we're going to start with the, uh, the connection in the configuration of the integration. We'll also go through how you're going to save time on double data entry by sending sales orders and purchase orders directly over to QuickBooks. We'll also cover sending payments for sales orders over to QuickBooks and how you can also associate QuickBooks classes to your order items. To begin with though, let's first get uh, this connection live between Canix and QuickBooks. So to do this, you'll navigate to the integrations page in the admin section of Canix, select the QuickBooks online integration, and then connect to QuickBooks. Now it is important to be aware that only one QuickBooks user can be connected into Canix at a time. So if you have multiple people who need to be sending invoices over to QuickBooks, if they're using separate accounts, they will be logged out each time a new user logs in. It's not a huge deal. It takes just a little bit, you know, 30 to 60 seconds to reconnect your account, but just something to be aware of that is a current limitation of the integration. So I'm gonna go select uh, connect QuickBooks online here. And I'm already logged in to QuickBooks, so I'll be asked to specify which company I want to connect. If you're not logged in, you'll just get the login screen before this step. So I'll, I'll select Sandbox Company 1. And once, uh, once we get redirected back to Canix, we'll see that we have this company added to our integration. And then if you need to add an additional company, it's as simple as selecting that add company option and adding in an additional QuickBooks company. If for whatever reason um, you aren't seeing maybe your customer list or your item list populate into Canix from QuickBooks as expected, you can always come back here and select refresh just to reestablish that connection and make sure everything is up to date but pretty simple to get connected in here to Canix. Now we'll be taking a look at a sales order that I put together and how this gets sent over to QuickBooks. So as you can see, we've got a sales order for this customer, one love extracts, two items, uh, two order items that they ordered. We've got the delivery date and all the terms filled in already. You'll also need to, before you can send the invoice over to QuickBooks, you'll need to make sure you have an invoice configured in Canix. So these invoices are customizable. If you want to have your invoice items ordered in a specific way, you can use Canix to generate um, a nice custom invoice catered to what your customers need. And you'll need to have this invoice uh, set up and created before you can send the data over to QuickBooks. So once that's configured, we'll select this option to create QuickBooks online invoice. And the first thing that's going to happen as this page loads, a modal is going to pop up and ask us, which company do we want to send this order over to in QuickBooks? So I'm just going to select sandbox company one for now. And then there's a, a few different mappings between Canix and QuickBooks that occur on this page. So the first thing is the customer. So we don't currently um, have any orders for this Canix customer in QuickBooks. And if I go here and search, it looks like this, uh, this customer actually does not exist in QuickBooks. No worries though, if you run into that, you can create the QuickBooks customer directly from Canix. You can see all of the data here is pre-populated based on the information we have on this customer in Canix. So I'm going to, going to hit create here, and then I'll jump back over to our sandbox company one, and we can look at our customer list in QuickBooks, and we'll see that we now have this one love extracts added to, to QuickBooks. We've got the billing address, a uh, company name, and you'll also have the email that was entered, the primary contact information as well. So now that we have our customer created in QuickBooks, we can 
make these similar associations between our Canix items and our QuickBooks items. So again, I will look at this item and see if we have it in QuickBooks. It does not exist. So I'll create this item. And when you create the item, you're given the option as well to populate the quantity on hand. So in this case, I'll just put a thousand units. You can also specify the asset account that this uh, specific item should be represented in, the income account and the expense account. So in our demo QuickBooks account, we only set up uh, you know one asset account. So that's why we're just seeing this one option, but you'll see all the asset accounts that you have configured in QuickBooks. And that's really up to your accounting team on which asset account, which income account, and which expense account uh, these should be mapped to. So we'll create this item over in QuickBooks and just wanna show quickly where you'll find that. So it'll be under sales, products, and services. And we can see this Andean Kush flower with the 1000 uh, quantity on hand that we just created and all of the accounts, the income account, asset account, and expense account have been populated as well. You'll notice that you also have the option to associate the item and the QuickBooks class, which we'll get to in a moment, to this item for future invoices. So that's why for some of these other selections, we have already associated the item in Canix with an item in QuickBooks. So we see these uh, pre-populated. We can still change these even if they're preset, um, but that just saves you a little bit of time. So you're not repeatedly doing the same mappings over and over again. Now you notice that we also have the option to map a QuickBooks class. I think a couple common use cases here would be for if you want to categorize your order items by, say, a brand or by a specific item type or um, product category. This will require that you have your classes configured in QuickBooks. So I'll just briefly show um, the configuration. So when you have track classes on and one to each row in a transaction, that is when you will see QuickBooks classes as an option in Canix. So we give you the option to map these classes to the rows in the transaction. We do not currently offer the ability to map the entire transaction, the entire order to a class. So just for when you need to map specific classes to specific order items. If you don't have that set up, no worries. You just won't see this uh, QuickBooks class in Canix. And just one other thing to be aware of, the QuickBooks class is optional. The item mapping and the custom mapping is required. So now I'll send this order over to QuickBooks Online. We've got all the necessary information filled in and you'll see that we're immediately given the link to this order in QuickBooks. And here we have the order with the payment terms, the email um, that was included, billing address, due date, shipping date, the order items and their quantities, all the information from the order in Canix just moved over to QuickBooks to avoid that double data entry. Now, once we have an invoice created in QuickBooks, you'll also be given the option to send payments over to QuickBooks. So since we've already established this connection for this specific order, when you go to record a payment in Canix, say we're getting a uh, partial payment in, you'll have this checkbox, do you wanna send this over to QuickBooks? You'll be able to specify the payment method as well as the desired uh, deposit account. And then when we go to look at this invoice in QuickBooks, I'm just gonna refresh the page here. We will see the payment. Oops. We will see the partial payment. So 
this pay, this order right here for one love extracts, we can see that it's partially been partially paid and there's still $286 due. So one thing to know on um, payments, just something to be aware of is we do not pull the payment data recorded in QuickBooks back into Canix. So what you see here in Canix is only the payments that have been recorded directly in Canix. Now, let's say for whatever reason, the order changes, maybe you realized uh, the delivery date's wrong or something of that nature. No worries, you can update the invoice in QuickBooks as well. You will see this modal appear again to select which company you're sending the invoice to. You'll only be able to update the invoice when you're sending it to the same company again. If you did make a mistake and need to send the invoice to another company, you'll just need to rebuild the sales order in Canix and send that invoice again. So just briefly before looking at updating invoices, the way you'll do that is just duplicating the order. You'll delete the old order. And then for that new order you've created, you will send over that information to QuickBooks Online. So I've got our One Love Extracts now, make sure that's associated. And I can edit any information here that I need to edit. So maybe um, we're, we want to send this invoice to an additional uh, an additional email address, an additional person at our at our customer, you can add another email address there, uh, basically edit any information you need to edit and send that updated data over to QuickBooks Online. Um, just one limitation worth mentioning on the send invoice to field, this is capped at 100 characters. So if you are um, sending the invoice to multiple individuals, there is a limit to how many email addresses you'll be able to add. But I've updated this data here, and we will send this over to QuickBooks Online. Now that we've taken a look at sending invoices over to QuickBooks Online, we'll take a look at purchase orders. So I've got a purchase order set up here, two order items on it, payment terms already filled in and all that, and I'll send this over to QuickBooks. Now, this behaves a little bit differently um, than on the sales order side. You'll still see this option to map to the uh, specific QuickBooks company you're trying to send the order to. So we'll select QuickBooks Company 1. We will remember associations between vendors that have already been established, but we do not provide that option to create the vendor if it doesn't already exist in Canix. Likewise, for items, we will... Um, provide the option to create the item, but we don't remember that association for purchase orders. So just not any specific reason for this, just something we haven't quite gotten to yet and just something to be aware of. So let's see. I'll map these to the correct items. You also have the option to map to QuickBooks classes as well. And then we'll send this purchase or order over to QuickBooks Online. Similarly to the invoice, if you need to update the order, you're able to do that directly from Canix. And we can see where this order was created in our expenses section of QuickBooks. And we can see this purchase order that we just created has been sent over to QuickBooks. One last thing to mention, there are resources in the Help Center that can help you if you run into any issues with your integration. So some tips and tricks, some common error messages and how to troubleshoot them, and also just some refreshers on how sending invoices and orders over to QuickBooks Online works. So if you have any issues, definitely check here and you may be able to find the answer that you're looking for. But that's all there is to cover on the Canix and QuickBooks integration. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.